a headrest that shows the planets in the solar system that were once more visible in the skies above than they are today. In the 1920s, the Royal Cemetery of Ur excavations became one of the great technical achievements of Middle Eastern archaeology and now represents one of the most spectacular discoveries of ancient Mesopotamia. Deep within the site lay the tombs of the 3rd millennia BC kings and queens of the city of Ur, famed in the Bible as the home of the biblical patriarch Abraham. And now on display at the iconic Penn Museum is one of the most stunningly preserved royal headdresses ever discovered at Ur. Dating back to over 4,500 years ago, this stunning piece of ancient majesty belonged to the renowned ruler Queen Puabi. Wait till you hear this. Ever since the discovery of the imperial graves at Ur, archaeologists and scholars have struggled to create an accurate representation of Queen Puabi. However, by analysing the mortuary dress and the material objects in the tomb, scholars concluded that Queen Puabi maintained a high status. And this difficulty in reconstructing Queen Puabi's appearance stemmed from the lack of knowledge about female Mesopotamian aesthetics. Although scholars were missing this information, that did not impede Catherine Woolley and one of Penn Museum's curators, Farah Leon Legrand, from giving Queen Puabi a face and adding makeup. And Dr. Legrand modelled his reconstruction of Queen Puabi on the sculpture from Tello, La Femme à la Sharp, which was created 500 years after she had lived. And this controversial reconstruction was eventually retracted and replaced with a faceless mannequin to avoid controversial assumptions about Sumerian aesthetics. Described on Penn Museum's website, this ornate headdress and a pair of earrings were found with the body of Queen Puabi in the Royal Cemetery at Ur. The headdress is made up of 20 gold leaves, two strings of lapis, a carnelian and a large gold comb. In addition to this, she wore chokers, necklaces and large lunette shaped earrings. Her upper body was covered by strands of beads made of precious metals and semi-precious stones that stretched from her shoulders to her belt. Ten rings decorated her fingers. A diadem or fillet made up of thousands of small lapis beads with gold pendants depicting plants and animals was apparently on a table near her head. And two attendants were in the chamber with Puabi, one crouched near her head and the other at her feet, with various metal, stone and pottery vessels lying around the walls of the chamber. Her tomb was intact and its contents typical of the well found throughout the royal cemetery. Like the other royal tombs, it consisted of a chamber set at the bottom of a deep pit accessed by a ramp, dramatically dubbed death pits because of the human toll within. The vaulted chamber, made of limestone rubble, lay at the northeast side of the pit and it measured about 9 feet by 14 feet, with the ceiling 5 feet above the floor and Puabi's body lay on a wooden bier in the chamber. Her name and title are known from the short inscriptions on one of the three cylinder seals found on her person. Although most women's cylinder seals at this time would have read wife of, so on, this seal made no mention of her husband. Instead, it gave her name and title as queen and the two cuneiform signs that composed her name were initially read as Shub Ad in Sumerian. Experts now believe it should be read in Akkadian as Puabi, or more correctly, Pu'abum, meaning Word of the Pharaoh, or title Iresh, sometimes mistakenly read as Nin, it means Queen. In early Mesopotamia, women, even elite women, were generally described in relation to their husbands. For example, the inscription on the cylinder seal of the wife of the ruler of the city state of Lagash reads Bara Namtara, wife of Lagal Anda ruler of the city-state of Lagash. And the fact that Puabi is identified without the mention of her husband may indicate that she was the queen in her own right. If so, she probably reigned prior to the time of the first dynasty of Ur, whose first ruler is known from the Sumerian kings list as Misani Puda. Inscribed artefacts from the seal impression strata layers above the royal tombs at her named Masani Pida, King of Kish. An honorific used by rulers claiming control over all of southern Mesopotamia. 
but in fact, Queen Puabe may predate all of this, and it makes you wonder on the way we understand these very ancient timelines. But what do you guys think about this one anyway? Comments below, and as always, thank you for watching.